The dog stayed in Philly yesterday. Okay. Well, I quit. Mm -hmm. All right, we're well, live. Okay, I, I just went through about two minutes of uh, talking with no sound <laughs> with my microphone off. <laughs> okay. Good, good evening. This this is I blame Augie, but it, no. But <laughs> <laughs> he sounded really good though. It, it was really great. I can't even reproduce it. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the <laughs> September fourteenth, twenty twenty Village of Mamaroneck board meeting. This is the work session. Uh, I need a motion to open a meeting. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor of opening? Aye. Uh, okay. uh, what I had said before is that we have a member of the public here to present <coughs> Ann and Purdy on the Juneteenth celebration. So we are going to go to Miss Purdy and then after Miss Purdy, uh, hopefully about 10 minutes, Shannon, uh, we are going to go into an executive session, which probably will not be short. Uh, Shannon, are you are you there? I am here, Tom, and I am unmuted. How are you this afternoon, folks? <laughs> Good to see you all. Um, yeah, this will be probably my tenth Zoom of the day, so try to top that. <laughs> um, I am uh, so so pleased to have a few minutes of your time, and and I've got a number of folks who are chiming in on my phone here. Uh, members of the public who are hoping to join so they can at least listen in. And I see the note from Cliff saying that now that the meeting has officially opened, they should be able to join via that Zoom. So uh, if you'll just bear with me for 10 seconds and just send a mass blast text. Okay, that ought to do the trick. Um, Good afternoon. I'm here representing a local anti-racism uh, outfit called One Mamaroneck that some or many of you might have heard of before. Um, we are thrilled to uh, have recently sort of metamorphosized from a grassroots coalition of families and, and like-minded um, you know, community members to uh, formally incorporate as a nonprofit. So our mission is simply community education, community advocacy, and support of the BIPOC community, um, and doing what we can to uh, you know, spread all the good American history that hasn't been discussed often enough, um, but also make it very relevant to issues affecting um, black and brown families and children in our community today. Um, we know that there have been lots of highly publicized issues in the public school district. Um, part of our mission is just recognizing that in order for people to get, um, you know, be supportive of, of improvements in that realm, we need for folks to be able to empathize. And so part of that empathy process is education. Um, you'll recall in February, we had a pop-up uh, African American History Month Museum at the Largemont Library. The village was kind enough to partner with us for a smaller scale Juneteenth um, celebration uh, on a Friday evening this past summer in spite of COVID. And so we're uh, crossing fingers that, you know, the, the world will be sort of in a post-pandemic uh, space by the time next Juneteenth rolls around. And I'm here tonight, today, to uh, re-present, because I think I actually kind of shared this with the board a, a few months back, a uh, brief resolution um, that would allow the village of Mamaroneck to um, 
let One Mamaroneck, the organization, coordinate a significant Juneteenth 2021 parade and festival, Crossfingers. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what uh, you all would like to do in terms of process, but I do have a, a brief document here that I can share on my screen if, if, if you all would like me to review that. Yes, please share. All right, great. Let us share screen. Okay, and hopefully you're seeing a, a Word document with a draft resolution on your screen. Not yet. Yeah. Right. I'll give it a second. Is that in the backup anyway? Um, I believe it is. No. And for right. folks who are still encountering difficulties joining the meeting, they should just keep trying that same Zoom link. Yeah, what's included in the backup, uh, Trustee Tafor, is the resolution that I believe was prepared by uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Purdy. Is that what you're looking for, uh, Shannon? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is it Simple. One page Word document. Yep. Okay. So, you know, I'm not going to go through line by line, but essentially what this resolution uh, would, um, you know, set in place would be that the board would agree to declare Saturday, June 19th, 2021 as the village's official Juneteenth 2021 celebration um, to include a parade and festival. And as we talked about a few months back and, and in follow-up conversations, what that would mean really is just that the village would, um, you know, commit to, you know, helping one Mamaronet get the necessary permits in place and, and sort of background, you know, uh, basic logistical support to uh, hold a parade and, and a festival in the park. Um, and that our organization in partnership with other like-minded um, entities such as the NAACP, um, CURE uh, would do the sort of hard work of pulling in parade participants, festival participants, you know, potential um, food and performance displays and things like that. Um, so basically the resolution is set forth uh, with the acknowledgement and wish to recognize the annual Juneteenth observance um, in remembrance of when the Union soldiers actually enforced the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing all the remaining enslaved peoples in <coughs> Texas. Um, the reason that we believe that this is a really important uh, celebration to continue to, uh, you know, uphold and celebrate is that we acknowledge that African American history is not consistently, thoroughly, or accurately integrated into our public schools. Um, that, you know, unfortunately, all too often, the, the public school system treats African American history as the history of enslaved peoples, and that's it. Um, and so we really feel that the village can and should be a, a local leader in, in Westchester County and in New York State, and that neighboring communities can benefit greatly from better understanding their history um, to continue the important work of dismant dismantling systemic racism. Um, and so again, working in concert with community social education groups such as One Mamaroneck, this resolution would commit village leadership um, to the sort of logistical and resource support uh, to help us coordinate a large scale parade and festival. And with that. You know, I just want to point out, I mean, uh, that a parade is a, a, a huge logistical undertaking. Yep. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I guess my, my question is uh, if the parade seems daunting, I would hope that you would still have the festival. I think if being the big point, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> we, we certainly will. Um, and I, I, I think if uh, with, with your permission, uh, Mr. Mayor and, and trustees, what, what I'd like to do in fact is to kind of ask if anybody's interested in volunteering to be a liaison 
to one Mamaroneck just to kind of keep aware of our continued coordination so that you've got a bird's eye view into, um, you know, the, the organizations that are signing on, the, the number of participants and things like that. Um, you know, it, it might be uh, useful in a lot of ways, but not the least of which to, to be able to share, you know, the level of interest that we see there is um, in putting something like this together. I would be happy to do that. Fantastic. Uh, okay, I mean, this is the, one of the things that the board uh, has to talk about with staff too, is because we are in very difficult situations. Uh, you know, what's the cost factor too? Uh, so that that is something that we can't act like uh, is not you know, a, a, a contributor here. So I, I think that that is uh, another thing to talk about, but, you know, we have it now. And uh, I, I think you know, the board has to give it, you know, I mean, I think, I think we're all in favor of the idea of a June 19th celebration. And we got to, you know, see what we can do to make that come to fruition. At least that's my view. Uh, I don't know what everybody else feels. I agree, Tom. I think um, it would be a great thing to start um, in Mamaroneck and with this 2021 Juneteenth following on a Saturday, I think a festival at Harbor Island that would raise awareness and bring people together could be a really positive occasion. Um, and God knows we need it after a year of this kind of lockdown. Like you, I'm concerned about um, costs. If we could um, we, I think if we can get some better idea of that, it will help us to deal with the scale and just, but, but I think it would be a really good thing to do. And if I might interject on, on as you all continue to, your deliberations, if there, if there is an easy way to do kind of a, a cost analysis of just the very basic resources that it would take the village to um, let another organization put something like this on. I mean, in terms of overtime hours, personnel, things like that. Um, we'd also be willing to, you know, explore fundraising and, and cost offset opportunities if we can. So yep. along, along those lines, this is Dan. Um, in the last paragraph in the Be It Resolved portion of your proposed resolution, um, I I, I'm, all in, I'm not opposed and I'm actually in favor of the uh, approach, but I would like to, after, after the word will in the second line, go right to support it and, and strike everything between that because we don't have the ability to commit organizations. Uh, we can't commit agencies. We can, all we can do is work, the village can work with you, uh, but we can't, we can't commit somebody else to do something. And that the way that the language reads, it could be interpreted that way. Uh, but it does say that we will support the coordination of the large scale. And I think that's really what you're asking for us to do. Sure. Happy to. Uh... Well, we, we, we could definitely work on, you know, we, we have to talk about it. And I'm sure that uh, there'll be, you know, uh, additions and subtractions before we pass a resolution. I don't think that has to be ironed out tonight. I think we could use the um, St. Patrick's Day Parade as a model for how this is sort of structured. Isn't that a very similar kind of an event for at least the parade portion of it? And then they do have, they do use the park, um, but it's in March, so it's not, the park isn't heavily used then, but I think that might be a start. I, I'm not familiar with the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I mean, I, I guess I would, the only concern that I would have, you know, and, and maybe it's a matter of uh, semantics, but to some, but, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day Parade being, you know, of course, uh, one assumes an, a celebration of Irish American heritage. Um, and given the current national conversation about just the sort of 400 plus years of, um, you know, systemic racism leveled against African Americans. I just wouldn't want there to be any kind of odd comparisons there. Do you know no, what I mean? I'm not, I'm not comparing the event. It's just the structure of the event. They, they, it's a parade okay. that is the similar culminates scale. Culminates in a festival. It culminates, culminates in, a festival. in Harbor Island Park. They, have permits, they are actually funding a scholarship. So they have a fundraising component. So I think it's actually very, very similar model to what 
you guys okay. might be trying to do. And we have we would have those numbers. Like no matter who's Got marching it. in the parade, the, there's the same cost. So that might give us just a, a financial model to work with. Well, I have a little, little to add, but I can start by saying I, I attended the, the one this year. Good. Nice celebration. I, 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 I think it was a Friday, not a Saturday. Friday was very nice. Um, just a just, uh, nice spirit. Um, very nice. Of course, very peaceful. Uh, so, so I think it, you're on for a good start, especially now with the good news that you're incorporated. Uh, I think uh, along the same lines, uh, it, it does require, we can contribute, we can help, but it does require kind of a lead and an organizer. And I think you made great strides today on that so that, so that we, you know, run, 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 the, and, and, and our staff can help, can run the, the business they need to. And we also, so, so we just also, we, we help as we help everybody else. I think that's probably where, where kind of Nora was coming from that we need to, to use the same, the same template, uh, and, and that, that's very much, I think, just uh, uh, a bit of the details and a bit of the necessary things that, depending on the type of, 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 uh, of event, uh, need, to, need to be tied to. So, so um, you know, we're on the right, right, on the right path, but uh, it needs more detail so that we can get to that, that point. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. And I'll, I will be in touch. Excellent. So but, shall I, I walk away? I'm sure, I'm sure you, you all need to that. next take it to a vote or? Well, I think we, we need to discuss it further at the okay. work session. Okay. Uh, but I know you'll be in touch with me. I have no doubt. Thank you for offering to be a liaison. Really appreciate that, Tom. Um, yeah, no, I mean, obviously, we're anxious to get started on coordination. So uh, if, if you can give me an idea of when the, the next work session will be held, when this vote is formally held, then I can be prepared to mobilize the troops, as it were. Two weeks. Two weeks? Okay, terrific. And, and meanwhile, maybe we can get a sense of like what the, what the kinds of costs would be. So we'd have like a, we can develop cost a Cost to the village. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I wish you luck with that, Trustee Nora. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks Everybody. a lot. I think greater minds than I will probably be figuring this out. <laughs> All right. Thank, thanks very much for the opportunity, folks. Okay. Yep. Uh, now I'm going to entertain a motion to go into executive session. Uh, you all have the executive session packet in front of you. Uh, item A is tax certiorari's. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1D of the New York State Public Officers Law as it re related to current litigation orient the Yacht Club versus the Village of Amaric, Top of the Ridge Condominiums versus the Village of Amaric, SNR Realty versus the Village of Amaric. B, Goldstein versus Village of Amaric is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session to, pursuant to 101-1D of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to ongoing litigation. And C, incentive program, it is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session to, pursuant to 1051F of the New York State Public Officers Law as it relates to medical, financial, credit, and employment history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Okay. Uh, that being said, may I have a motion? So moved. May I have a second? <laughs> There was an uh, there was an addition this this morning on yeah. the on the Hampshire litigation, so let's add the fourth one, a B, a D section D, which is Hampshire litigation, based on the papers we received uh, Friday or Thursday and, and and other documents, so we can at least get 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 working on that too. Hampshire, Hampshire litigation also, so that would fall under uh, 101 1D. Yes. For litigation. Okay. That all being said, there's a motion and a second. Okay. 
Is this a motion, Kelly Winstrom? I second. Morgan Core rule. Trustees Winstrom? Yes, but I'll be recusing from the Hampshire discussion. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, now I'll meet you all in executive session. Morgan. Okay.
Can you log that off, please? I'm ending it. life. Augie. Yes. Check your phone. I just sent you an email. If Glenn can get back into the meeting. Who? I sent him the information. Who? I see him. I see him. He's in there. Okay, good. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Everybody back? Mm -hmm. Yep. Laura here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Ending executive session. Okay. I need a motion to end executive session. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 In executive session, uh, we took two votes. Uh, one vote was uh, to ask for an extension on the Goldstein matter that passed three to one. Another vote was to approve a year of service incentive for employees, and that uh, passed unanimously. These will be reported in the, the minutes. Uh, I'm sorry, Mayor, I, I think it was misstated. What was the mistake? It was, it's the Hampshire matter. Pardon me, you're right. It was the Hampshire matter. You're right. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have three items we're going to keep working on in uh, work session. Uh, and then we're going to go to a regular meeting. So we're going to be a little late starting a regular meeting. Is Chief, is the Chief still on? Yeah, I see him there. Yes, he's there. Uh, Chris, uh, Chief Lady, I'm very sorry uh, to keep you up. Uh, I'm doing this. I apologize. Uh, could you please go to your item uh, about the, the desk and please explain it to us? Yeah. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, the uh, last time the equipment behind the desk was replaced was roughly 13 years ago. Um, we've uh, budgeted for and uh, are trying to lease um, new equipment from uh, Goose Town and they are on state contract. Now, now, Chief, when you say the equipment behind the desk, could you just go into a little more detail? So that's that's the equipment when uh, we receive 911 calls. That's how uh, we dispatch the officers, uh, how we get through to uh, put calls through to uh, for EMS and uh, fire. Okay. Anybody have any questions for the Chief? Uh, probably not for the Chief, but for, uh, for our... Um, Fair treasurer, is this uh, the chief said this is in the budget? Do we know how much we have for this? We budget for it. Have enough? Basically, we yep. have an estimate of how much the desk is. And in the annual budget to 2000, 2001, we put in those lease payments, the annual lease payments. Am I correct, chief? Yeah. That's correct. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Is it in our budget for this year? If for, is it, there's there a budget line for this? And how much is it? It, it is for this year, the 2021 budget. Um, I think it's 22,000 a year. Chris, do you have a budget in front of you? Uh, it's 80, I believe it's 18, 18, four. Yeah, I think that the 22 may have been the number we put in during the budget process because okay. you hadn't gotten the official quote yet from Goose Town. So, so it's fully covered. Well, it, this is the first year lease payment. 
this is a multi-year lease. So, uh, you know, we're going to ask the board uh, at the next meeting to award the contract uh, uh, sub uh, subsequent to future appropriations. Subject future Do we have any uh, competitive bids? They're on state contract. So that generally means it's less expensive than if we were to try and bid it out? The state already went out and bid out these yeah. services and they got the lowest bidder. Right. We're piggybacking. Right. It is 18,000, 460, oh. 3120, 460. Communication desk, 18,000. What page are you on? Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. 54 or 55? 55. 55. Okay, got it. Um, this one, just should I use one? I just noticed that the um, what we have in our backup is from the state of New Jersey, but we're assuming that this is it's the state of New York as well. Yeah, we're allowed to piggyback onto any other state contract. Great, thank and, you. And we piggyback onto some Jersey contracts in the past. Great, thanks. Page sixty-one. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Anybody have any other questions for the chief or for staff about expenses? It's already budgeted. Uh, I guess, Chief, would it be fair to say that the equipment behind the desk now has uh, lived past its shelf life? Uh, yeah, very much so. <laughs> uh, uh, I need this replaced ASAP. Is a critical piece of equipment for the police department? It is. For the community. The community. Which you serve. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? We understand how difficult the times are. So we know how hard you're working, Chief, and everybody in the department. I know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry for keeping you waiting. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any other questions for the Chief? We can, or if, if not, uh, let's put this on for the next uh, Board of Trustees regular meeting. We can approve it. On the 29th? Yeah. We can't do it tonight? You, you can wait two weeks, right, Chief? Uh, Why don't... Let's, I mean, let's if, do... If, if it can be done tonight, I, I would appreciate it. Let's, let's, it. let's do, get it tonight. Then we don't have to reprint this paper. Let's Thank do you. it tonight. <laughs> Excellent. All right. That because you had to wait, we'll do it tonight. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> I want to hear you letting out about it tomorrow. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Chief. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. Well, you need me to put that on the agenda. Okay. Uh, the next item is uh, that's on for tonight. One E, the Bricksmore Agreement. Bob. Uh. So last time the board discussed this, we asked you to make certain changes to the agreement. Uh, I did that. I have not discussed it with the Bricksmore folks, but I did that. And then Trustee Nacho sent me an email asking me to make several other changes. And so I bring it back to the board and you can let me know what you want me to do. Didn't we? Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, I'll, then I'll speak first. I saw the changes that Trustee Natchez proposed, and I, I don't think they're workable. Uh, I, I, for one, am in favor of going with the original agreement. The, the, as, as amended by Mr. Spolzino. Why do you think they're not workable, Tom? I, I think that they're, they're way too specific. They're, they're not anything that goes into a, a normal agreement. Uh, I, I think that we are putting a real onus on the Bricksmore folks. The Bricksmore folks did things 
to help the community. They're putting up two ballads and they're to protect a transformer that they don't own. That was that predated them. So I think we, we've once again taken a simple matter uh, and really complicated it. Excuse me. I respectfully disagree. I'll just say that I, I agree with Tom, for example, you know, removing all debris from the walk on a daily basis, I think it's much better to just leave it to the satisfaction of the building or the uh, village manager and leave it at that. We get so specific with these things <laughs> and I just don't think it behooves the village either in this instance or, you know, with other people looking to do things with the village in the future. Um, I mean, this 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 sidewalk was put in as a as a favor to the village. We asked for it, and it's like we're looking a gift horse in the mouth at this point. But those are my views. So I would prefer that we go with the original the agreement that is the first in our backup that Bob had negotiated earlier. I go next to move quickly. Yeah. Some, some of the changes here, I think we had uh, in a way already agreed. So we're going backwards because for example, I thought the ADA reference was, was important and some others, I, I, I'm not talking about the new, the, uh, the, the other additions, I, 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 I didn't really go one by one, but on the, on the, the things that we discussed already last time, I don't want to go back even before behind that. I thought we were done with those. So, so that's where I am. So I had supported them and I don't know if, if some of these newer things were, were just minor, but, uh, but I, I, did, I think we had a substantive discussion last time. It, it, it is, it, it, now the property is working in some respects, it's not, we, we're thankful and we're, we're, we're happy that, that this, is, this is moving forward, but it, it, is, it, is, it is, it's kind of the two parties, we've, they, they've, they've also received uh, help from the village, they got the huge variance. It's very tight there, so so I mean it's, it works both ways. So so hopefully we'll get this done. But uh, but I think we I, I don't want to go beyond what we had already agreed to. Okay, so you you, you I, I just correct me if I'm wrong. You, you're then saying we go with uh, Mr. Sposino's amended memo. Oh, because we had made some progress last time okay. on ADA okay. compliance, etc. All right, thank you. Well, I can tell you that if you go down there it's always a mess and there's no requirement you know it's just not cleaned up and it could be so we can send a building inspector down there a mess is a mess no one's allowed to have a mess All right, so at least I think I hear a consensus that we're going with uh, Mr. Sposino's agreement. Okay. Now, can, can, can you clarify? Uh, as I said, we had already agreed on certain language. For example, mm -hmm. uh, now it's red and red with 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 uh, with um, with with yellow. Um, uh, yellow. yellow. I, I want to know what I'm approving. I think that's the basic thing. So yellow, so, red is the all changes are in red. The differences between the first version that I sent you back several weeks ago and this version that was based on the discussion at the last board meeting, those are highlighted in yellow. Okay. Some of those, I think, I think we got agreement on. Like they, we have to make sure that it's ADA compliant so that there's no discussion when the enforcement goes there where it has to be ADA or not. So that we make sure that everything in this village is ADA. Uh, so I thought that's in there, right? That, no, it is. That's one of the things we had agreed last time. Not it's in there. It's here now. It's it in, is. It's in paragraph A one. A one. I don't know what else was was that clear. Maybe I don't know, Christy, you have something to. Uh, you want to say something? I don't have it in my packet. I'm so, I mean, okay. all I, 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 I thought you wanted to say something. I did not get a revised amended license agreement. Yeah, Nora, the, there's a memo from me dated, I guess the beginning of it. Let me just look online. September 10th. 
and that has the the memo and draft agreement that I sent you in July, the revised agreement that I prepared pursuant to the discussion last month, and then trustee matches uh, August 31st email to me. I don't have that in my packet. That's my problem. Okay. Are we ready to move on this tonight? I, mean, I, I I haven't I didn't look at any of the documents because I don't I have a different I have different documents I don't have any I don't have I'm seeing online I haven't seen this before so I'm you I'm out I can't you don't have my September 10th memo not in my packet no oh, okay I'm seeing it online but I don't have it in my packet so I did not look at it before tonight I didn't compare my packet to online. Well, can you send it out right now, Bob, so people can look at it? I'm looking at it online. It's, it's online, just that it's, right? it's 7.33 and, I, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking about adding two ballots. So, Nora, your packet doesn't have two memos, one dated yeah. September 10, one dated July 7. No. Sorry about that. Okay. So you either go ahead or you put it off till the next meeting. Is that what you guys want to do? Put it off to the next meeting? Ooh. You know, we'll make the decision during the meeting. We got to move on. Uh, the next is renewal of contract of village attorney. Uh, I think Mr. Attorney's contract expired yesterday. That's correct. Uh, this contract will bring us to the next organizational meeting. Yeah. Which I think is be here before we know it. Uh, it's less than 90 days. So that's what the renewal is for. Everybody have a problem with doing it tonight? Because no. we have to. We don't have. We, we won't have we a lawyer. Yeah. Thank you. All right. That being said, uh, you guys want to take five minutes before we go into the regular meeting? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. I want to say I, I have to. I have to be out uh, quarter to nine today. I have to be. Okay. So we'll take. Let's take a. Five, 10 minute break. We'll see you back here. I need a motion to end the work session. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all.
You have a mic and you have a sound. Everything's out, Tom. Okay, buddy. You have to open the meeting. I know. I'll put the ad in front of you. Special display. Room here. Is everybody on? The trustees are all on. The village manager's on. Dan's on. Chrissy's on. Bobby S. Yep, he's on. All right. Good. The whole gang's here. <coughs> everybody ready? Yep. Good evening. And welcome to the regular board meeting of the Village of Mariner Board of Trustees. We're starting a little late. Uh, I th thank you for your indulgence and waiting for us. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting. So moved. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and justice, and justice for all. Thank you. All righty, folks. All right. First item on the agenda is comments to the board. Have anybody looking to speak, Claude? Yep. Who do we got? 
Glenn and Daria. Okay. Glenn, you're on. Hello. Uh, first, <laughs> uh, some congratulations uh, to the Village of Mimernik, uh Marine Education Center for some of the um, best compliance with COVID-19 in Westchester. A friend of mine went fishing down in the village the other day, and as he was coming out, I go, how'd you do? And he goes, I didn't catch a thing. All the fish were socially distancing. So congratulations, Village of Mimernik. My job done. So now that we got the humor out of the way, <laughs> summer, um, I was watching the tree committee uh, meeting the other day and a couple of things came up. One, there was a uh, group of trees that was cut. Uh, there was an explanation given by the employee that was involved in it. The village manager gave an explanation and the tree committee doesn't seem to like the explanation and wants the employee to have to come before them. I don't think it's proper to have a committee question an employee in that fashion. It almost seems like they don't believe what he said, that there was other motivations for the trees to be cut down. If they have an issue at that level, it should be done by the trustees. I don't feel comfortable that village employees their motivations should be questioned by a committee. Um, also at the same meeting, they were talking about removing trees on village property and the procedures. And Jerry came up with a procedure, well, I can, I can um, do a permit and then go in before the tree committee. And I think that is not well thought out because of the liabilities if there's disagreement between the tree committee. I actually asked around, a friend of mine actually runs DPW in Larchmont. What they do is they have hired an arborist. And if anybody calls in that wants a tree removed, unless it's in imminent danger of falling down, Ricky will get a list of eight to 12 trees and then have the arborist look at every single tree that has been asked about. And the arborist would make an independent determination on whether a tree should be removed, what the problem with a tree is and whatever else is, report back to DPW they would give the report to the, the tree committee and such, and that would be the basis of any tree removal. Independent contractor, all this guy does is has a, he doesn't cut the trees. All he does is go out with the pen and the pad. They get 12 trees, eight trees, whatever the amount of trees is, he goes out and he makes a recommendation on every single tree which puts the liability if a tree falls, you don't have to worry about the tree committee, you don't have to worry about the village manager, you don't have to worry about, you have independent contractor that makes the decision and they're basically their arborist is on call. They have an arborist that they contract with, the, the village of Larchmont has a contract with them and that who, that's the person who makes all the decisions on whether a tree on, on their village property has to be removed or not. And I think that's probably legally the best way to go for this village to keep you out of any favoritism or anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll get to somebody else with their hand up. Yes. Daria. Daria. Hello, Daria. Unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Daria. Awesome. Well, hi, I'm Daria. Um, I just wanted to speak up today and, and basically tell you guys that I'm beginning to work with others in the Larchmont Marinick area on taxpayer issues. And I wanted to ask you guys why we are spending so much taxpayer money on lawyers to defend Cindy Goldstein and lawyers to fight development projects. 
it seems to me that this is costing our whole area a huge amount of money, which I think would be better served in the budgets for the schools and roads and services. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Dari. Uh, nobody else? No more hands, no more hands. Okay. Um, there are no public hearings tonight. Just so for people watching and who are participating online, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the order of the bills so that we have uh, our bills paid. And then I'm gonna switch to item four uh, D, which is a resolution authorizing the painting of Black Lives Matter mural on Madison Street, because I know most of the people who are in waiting are here for that. So in the, in the interest of trying to not keep people up too late, we'll do that. Good. Uh, so the first item is the order of the bills. Uh, resolution authorizing budget transfers for Harbor Master Salaries. Everybody have that in front of them? Okay, anybody have any questions or concerns with that issue? No? No. No. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to, uh, please, somebody, I'll entertain a motion to approve that. So moved. So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees Winship? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Support? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. All righty, thank you. The next is a resolution authorizing budget transfers for crossing guard salaries. And this uh, was $1,400, $14,000 uh, from appropriate fund balance to the police department. Uh, and this is because, Gary, we, we had not anticipated having crossing guards back? No, the split shift, Mayor. So the split shift daily schedule that the uh, that the schools came up with oh, require right. us to create additional midday uh, student crossing at nine locations, and that was not part of the original budget. Okay, so what it used to happen is that we would have crossing guards in the morning, and then crossing guards at dismissal. Now uh -huh. we have crossing guards at lunch too. That's right. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. It's cost of doing business. Yeah, that's just the way things are now. Uh, Anybody have any questions or concerns? Okay, can I have a, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. What was here? Trustees Winter? Yes. Natchez? Yes. So, Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing uh, to execute budget amendment to fund beach payroll expense. Uh, Jerry, can you just give us a little update on this? Mayor, this will be the final transfer, I believe. Uh, I think we've wrapped it up where um, because we had to, oh, because we opened up the beach earlier than expected, yeah. we had some additional uh, expenses uh, due to the old early opening. Um, but as you know, or as the board knows, we've had additional revenue as well. We had a banner year at the um, at the beach with an increase of, uh, I believe, 167% um, than anticipated in revenue. So these, this, this, reven this expense is more than offset by revenue increases? It is, yes. I don't have the number of the offset, but it is definitely offset by revenue expenses. Okay. By I revenue agree. increases. Okay. Anybody else on the board have questions about this? No, this is great. Mm -hmm. Yes, and thank you to the staff uh, down there. They're, they ran a really great season this year. Uh, yeah. th there were not a lot of uh, opportunities for people to have recreation, and I think uh, a lot of people appreciated our beach and having it open, and staff really ran it well, and uh, we, you know, we, we overcame the little difficulty we had in the beginning about getting qualified lifeguards, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody had a great summer. Thank you to the staff of the Recreation Department and the Parks Department for keeping the beach so beautiful. Uh, the next resolution uh, is authorizing a budget transfer to fund Tropical Storm Isaias. Give me a motion on this. 
Did we vote on the beach one? Oh, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't vote. I'm sorry. I no. need a motion. No, so moved. I'll bring Second. the motion. Second. motion. Second. Augustino. Trustees right. Wisher? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Ray Murphy? Aye. Okay, the next one is uh, to fund the tropical storm management budget and COVID 19 salaries. Jerry, you just want to? There's just minor adjustments, Mayor, to our original anticipated line items for Tropical Storm SIEs on overtime and COVID-19 response on salaries. Um, as the board knows, my office and others, mostly department heads, have been very active in um, submitting to the Department of Homeland Security our preliminary damage assessment uh, for the Tropical Storm, which is in excess of a million dollars for this village. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda. No, I need a motion. I'm sorry. I need a motion. <laughs> He's flying. So uh, moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees Winsher. Yes. Nantes. Yes. Lucas. Yes. The four. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, next item is the abstract of uh, manual payments. And these amount to $15,610.63. Uh, a lot of these are Westchester Joint Waterworks, uh, various utilities, but mostly Westchester Joint Waterworks, the village. Uh, and hydrant rentals. Anybody have any questions or concerns? No. Okay. Not me. Need a motion? All right, I'll make the motion. Second. Augustino? Trustees Winstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next is the abstract of ordered vouchers, $881,580.39. Anybody on the board have any questions or concerns? Yeah, I have a couple of questions on, pay, on page 21 of 46. Why are we paying for uh, sexual harassment, food for sexual harassment? 21 of 46. On page 21 of 46. And where are you looking? Bottom of the page. Training? The bottom. At the bottom, you're talking about food for sexual harassment training? The fire department yeah. and Chief Barney is uh, doing our required annual sexual harassment training for all the volunteer firefighters. And so they must have been purchasing food for those uh, training sessions. That's what this is. We're not paying for sexual harassment training. They're performing it. Uh, actually, Chief Barney has headed up, is heading up the, the, um, the training uh, for the fire department. I trained him and now he's training firemen and fire women, fire personnel. This is forty-two dollars and twenty-seven cents. I bet it's bagels and coffee. For food, yeah, it's probably coffee and donuts. Yeah, not for nothing. Those guys can eat some donuts. Is that what is that what you're asking about? That forty-two dollars? Yeah, it's, it's the concept we've been having. It's everybody in the village, all volunteers, or everybody else, have been required to have sexual harassment training, and we haven't done this with anybody else. So that just struck me as oh, I see. Uh, out of character, not that not that people aren't doing, you know what's needed, uh, but it's it's not what the rest of the village is adhering to. So the, you know the, the question is setting precedents to do something like that, and that that is question. to purchase food for the firefighters during a training session. That's the precedent that you don't want to set. Yeah. I think we're asking the fire department to do a lot. Uh, I, I think that what what happened here uh, is that uh, Chief Barney took it upon himself uh, to uh, shell out money out of his pocket uh, because it, the check is going to Barney. Uh, I think we ask our fire fighters to do a lot. Uh, this is something new. I, I don't think it's onerous to have a couple of donuts and some Dunkin' Donuts coffee put them there. Uh, so I, I, I have no problem with this. I think maybe what Dan is saying is when we do the other trainings, maybe that would be nice for the other people too. 
No, the other trainings are going to be online. I'm not going to be able to, unless I'm going to send Can we do them, them online? Them. Yeah, I'm going all online for everyone else. It's the firemen, it's the firefighters that I wanted to do in person because there's just a, a disconnect with electronics and electronic devices and capabilities. capabilities. So they're doing it during their regular meetings as a portion oh, of the okay. regular okay. meeting. So they're doing okay. it at their regular meetings. Okay. Everyone else will be online and that'll be rolling out very quickly, very soon. We've Good. been working, Karen Good. and I and Danielle have been working on that this week, actually. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, uh, is there a motion to approve the audit? Yes, so moved. Second? All right, I'll second, because I do want to get out of here tonight. Uh, Augie, call the roll. Trustees Winthrop? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, one second. Uh, we're we're going to jump to item, what the hell did I say? Uh, 4D. 4D. Or D. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay. Let me get it up here. All right. This is this is an authorization for an end of summer party, which is already you know it's it's a block party. Uh, it has been asked that they'd be allowed to paint Black Lives Matter uh, on the street between uh, Old White Plains Road on Grand Street. Uh, I was in support of it. I think that there are some uh, questions from the Board of Trustees about doing it. Uh, anybody on the board like to comment on it? I'd like to hear from the public. Anybody else on the board want to comment on it? Well, how are we going to do it? We're going to hear from the public, or you want us to? Well, I'm asking you if you want to comment on it. I'd like to hear from the public too. Okay, okay then you don't want to comment. All right, go to. No, the not, I'm not saying that I don't want to comment. I might well, comment after, after I hear from the public. I'm asking you for your opinion. You don't want to, you know, you can do it later. Fine. Thank you. Before, I'll, I'll just say that you, uh, when we left it last time, it was it was, and we had some questions about a mural. Uh, what we do have. Uh, in front of us for today is, and it's in the backup. It 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 is it is the, as the mayor said, just to be very clear, that the the, the the words would be painted in the street. So it, it is that type that type of mural. We we didn't have that in front of us last time. So with that clarity, yes, I do want to hear from the public. Okay, uh, just for the folks who are going to be speaking, this is a three minute time limit on these comments. Why don't we go to Rita, because Glenn is always there. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah, Rita. Okay. Hi, Mayor, yeah. Please Please introduce yourself. board members. Uh, I am a lifelong resident of Mamaroneck. Um, I feel that painting a Black Lives Matter street painting in a section of the village that is not centrally located creates a bad image and a division for our community. Why not paint it in a central location near Village Hall or Harbor Island, along with other paintings that symbolize other groups that have done so much for our community, like our police force and volunteer fire departments. In this way, all community members can enjoy the paintings and all groups can be recognized. Painting a Black Lives Matter mural in Washingtonville will only divide our community as African Americans reside in all parts of Mamaroneck not just Washingtonville. And there are so many other groups that have contributed so much to our village that also deserve to be recognized. The BOT's responsibility is not to take a political stance against one group or another. They should be emphasizing what we can do together as one community and not create a division by su supporting only one group. I oppose the Black Lives Matter mural on, at Washingtonville 
If you want to do it, I think you should do it elsewhere um, in the village so that everybody can um, view it or a better way to support this cause. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gunner. Uh, Ted, who's next? Okay. We blend for last. Uh, Susan? Susan, yeah. Hello, Susan. Hello? Hello, you're on. Uh, yes, I think that if you're going to do that for that one group, then you should be um, doing allowing other groups um, to do the same thing that support different causes. Um, and I think that you need to be listening to the other groups also equally as you do that group. Thank you. Robert. Robert. Up. Oh. You're on, sir. Good evening, everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name is Robert Michelli, and I am standing here to speak with regards to the proposed painting of a Black Lives Matter mural at the upcoming block party. The meeting we are having tonight is a direct result of our mayor, Tom Murphy, who feels this painting supersedes the success successful day to day running of the village and even the remembrance of those lost during 9 11. I cannot sit back any longer and watch the hypocrisy that has been unfolding the past couple of months. Our mayor takes it upon himself to embrace divisive views that are currently tearing this country apart. As it clearly stated on the application for a block party permit, the village under section 123.1 party, a neighborhood block party celebration or event shall not include a political meeting or a rally of similar activity having the principal purpose as fundraising for an individual or organization. Furthermore, as stated on the website for Black Lives Matter is the fact that this organization is founded by trained Marxists and follows Marxist ideological theories. Black Lives Matter does, Black Lives Matter also has announced their support for the Democratic Party, which is a political party. For over 120 years, the village of Amaranik has been an inclusive, safe, and welcoming place for people of all different cultures to come live, raise families, and prosper. Racism and sexism have never been an issue in our community. Not only does this mural go against the laws created by our local government, but also introduces a destructive presence in our community. One must only turn on the news to see that whatever, whenever Black Lives Matter is introdu introduced into a community, a sense of importance to a certain race of people seems to take the forefront, thereby causing sanctions, which we are trying to stop. There have been proven cases of destruction from the so-called cause, riots, antagonistic anti actions, hateful words, shouting, hateful words shouted, looting. More importantly, it never benefits the people it espouses to help. On Saturday night, Black Lives Matter activists blockaded an entrance to a hospital in California to delay treatment to two police officers who were ambushed and shot in the head. Is this the type of movement we want to come to our village? Since the Black Lives Matter March on June 5th, our friendly village has had three illegal demonstrations. The first illegal activity was the march itself, which, Mr. which Mayor Tom Murphy participated in. There was not a permit issue for this event. I know this because I've personally spoken to village manager, Jerry Barbero, who has told me no permits were ever issued or filed. The second illegal activity was the gathering for racial justice and equality down at the Harbor. This again, according to Mr. Barbero, was a coordinated event and yet no permit was ever filed or given to have this event. The third illegal activity was related to the incident involving protesters who were criminally trespassing and camping out on the Mamaronic High School grounds. I know this because once again, I have spoken to Mr. Barbero as well as village police and the high school board. No permit was ever given for, given for this event. The high school board told the protest, protesters to leave, but they refused. By having this mural painted in the streets, we are, as a village are welcoming an organization as destructive, Hi. dangerous, and we have seen does not care about the rules or laws that everyday citizens follow. Our leadership is cowering down to a group of people to not incite them. I feel our leaders are putting politics over our personal safety. An individual can choose to support or believe in any ideology they choose to. When our elected officials are in office to enforce the laws that are in place, they shouldn't have an obligation to protect all of us equally in an unbiased manner. Mr. Mayor, you are not upholding your oath to do these things. To summarize, three times the laws were broken to allow for protests, and now, Mr. Mayor, you are looking to allow another law to be broken by allowing a BLM mural to be painted during a block party. 
which is directly in defiance of section 123.1. Are we to believe that certain people are entitled and allowed to not follow our laws? Thank you for allowing me to state the obvious facts of illegal activity in our town and village and for voicing my opinion. Thank you. Uh, give me that number. Thank you. Uh, get uh, Jimmy and Laura and then we'll get Glenn. Did you know to me? I'm getting it right now from Sally. My, I just want to make you aware that myself and my husband, James Abadi, are sharing the screen, so he'll have to raise his hand a second time if he chooses to speak. Fair enough. Okay, Washingtonville, the Flats, is no stranger to diversity. We have lived in our neighborhood for generations side by side, accompanied, encompassing diversity. This has never changed Washingtonville. Historically, and a matter of fact, we were made up of Italian immigrants along with African Americans. We have always lived together, attending school as neighbors, lifelong friends for generations. Family members have shared service, work side by side on a village fire department, school systems and police force. We represent diversity. Please understand I'm speaking out to make you aware and understand that our community of Washingtonville as a whole cannot continue to shoulder or burden the following. We are burdening overcrowding, parking issues, absentee landlords, cross through traffic, illegal housing, poor quality of life, unkept streets, all that has not been resolved. And now you wanna paint a mural and you want a designated mural in one specific side of town, the smallest side of town, the town that already recognizes that black lives do matter. We live together. We're overburdened and overrun and our taxpayers are the largest investment. Our homes are continually, continuously jeopardized by the lack of support from the BOT. With that being said, why would you allow a Black Lives Matter or a Black Party during COVID-19 to even exist? Before you paint the mural in Washingtonville, how about considering painting lines for parking and to take up our 147 spaces that are overrun? How about our curb appeal and making our taxpayer dollars work for us? How about our safety? How about what the tax papers, taxpayers need and want? Daniel Star Sarnoff stated many years ago to me in a meeting that they wouldn't paint lines for cars to park in because the upkeep of those lines were far too expensive to upkeep. To date, no lines for our 147 parking spaces that we have no room for. There is so much in this small section of this community that needs to be done. We cannot and cannot accept painting of this mural any further for this matter. We already opposed the first wall mural on Center Avenue years ago. Three years later now, it's falling to disarray, fading and no upkeep. It's now more than three years later. Why would we accept this during this time? Washingtonville is cameraless. If you were to paint something so sensitive in this area, how would you ensure everyone's safety? And it, it's a very sensitive and explosive issue. Myself and Ms. O'Connor spoke to you the other day on the phone, Mayor, and you said to us, but what did have these people gone through? I understand what they've gone through, but it's not the BOT's position to take any stance as a social worker. You are here to work for us, for the community, for our safety. We are here to work, you are to maintain our taxpayer dollars, you're supposed to maintain our curb appeal, you're to, supposed to worry about our budget, our firefighters, our police. You, you're not supposed to take a political stance in a situation like this. We feel by allowing this mural to be painted in a small section of Washingtonville, it's unacceptable. Why is the need and only in the area of the village of Mamaroneck, is this the only section of the village of Mamaroneck that African-American people live? Is this the only place that you could think of to put this mural? We are the most diversified section of town. The small section of town is more aware of this. Why choose this section of the village and place us at risk of becoming an Instagrammable, Instagrammable destination or location, inviting an overabundance of visitors to view a street mural without support or structure? Washingtonville cannot carry a burden of this continuous stream of out-of-town visitors to pay homage to a mural. This is not a correct location to place this mural at at any length. Okay. Why are we considering putting it at the harbor and carving out a section of the harbor that could be supported and have foot traffic and you can, you can make clear and concise decision as to what organizations and movements this village should support? 
Or why don't you place it in front of the regatta, in front of Village Hall, and mirror what Yonkers has done? Why are you choosing to do something to Washingtonville? And if you're going to do it to Washingtonville, then go to Florence Park and paint it there. Go to the entrance of Orienta and paint it there. Go to Shore Acres and paint it there. Go to the Heights and paint it there. It should be equitable for everyone or it shouldn't be done at all. And it shouldn't start in Washingtonville because certain community members choose to have this. That's not what we should be doing at this point. Whatever the gentleman said prior to this is the fact and the truth. You're, the negative the negative aspect outweighs any positive at this moment in time. Okay, your, your time is up, but thank you very much for your comments. Who's up next? I do Glenn, get him on. Glenn. Uh, good evening. Uh, a couple of quick questions, uh, uh, if you can answer, Mayor Murphy. Was this actually uh, a request by um, some members of the community to put the mural in? Yes. Uh, is the village going to pay for it or uh, is it being paid by whatever people or organization is having the block party? The community members. The community is uh, paying. We are not having any costs. And they chose the location. Correct. Okay. I want everybody to take a step back here. There's two things. There's Black Lives Matter, the idea, which I completely agree with, and Black Lives Matter, the organization, which has already been mentioned, is a political organization with Marxist leanings. If the village is going to allow this, number one, maybe you make it a temporary mural, that way it coincides with the event much like you would do for St. Patty's Day, a week later, the mural basically is, is, is gone. Number two, whatever, whatever statement you make giving permission, yep. emphasize the fact you are supporting Black Lives Matter, the idea, not Black Lives Matter, the organization. Three, if another organization wants to put Blue Lives Matter on East Prospect Avenue, or Italian pride over by St. Vito's church or something similar, that that would also be allowed. But I think that if you're talking about a community block party where they want to have the Black Lives Matter message, I don't see a problem with that. But yeah, it has to be emphasized and pleased. I also believe in this community. I believe we're multicultural and black lives. You have to separate black lives matter. The idea from black lives matter, the organization. I therefore would support the mural if you put in those uh, restrictions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll go to Tracy D and then we'll go back to uh, Laura and Jimmy because I think uh, Jimmy wants to say something. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, Tracy. How are you? I'm well. My name is Tracy Dickerson. I'm a lifelong Washingtonville resident. I think the Black Lives Matter mural is a phenomenal idea um, in place of the block party that is unable to take place this year. Um, I know that the Elks Lodge or Elks Club is predominantly an African-American um, gathering place and uh, I believe all are welcome there actually but they usually throw a pretty awesome block party. Um, everyone in Washingtonville is invited. Not many show up, but the whole group hangs out. I think that um, in place of this to socially distance and create a mural would be a phenomenal idea to send a message. I think that um, Mamaronek has a relatively small percentage of African-Americans residing there. And at this point in time, it's a good thing to show your support. I mean, Clearly there is something going on in Mamaroneck. If high school students are standing outside protesting racism in the high school, if there's lawsuits going on against the high school, if BLM is happening, protests are happening in the streets of Mamaroneck. I mean, 
we're asking, we're showing you, we are speaking out and sending the message that something is not right in the community. And we're asking for everyone to join together and to be on our side, to everyone just come together, love us, show us your support. What is the issue? Um, you know, I'm just feeling a lot of hostility towards it. And maybe it's because of what the media is spreading and everything like that. But like Glenn had said previously, um, separate yourself from Black Lives Matter, the movement and really look at the message of it. Look at what people are asking for. Look at people as human beings. Um, I see nothing wrong with the temporary paint. I think that that's a great idea. And I also have heard a few times that um, it be put down at the harbor. I think that that is a phenomenal idea. I think it would give them more space to paint it. I think that it would be more visible. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really loving that idea. So that's really all I have to say. And um, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. And I hope to see good things come from this. I love you guys, Village of Mamaroneck, and let's all come together. Let's support each other. Thank you, Trace. I believe Mr. Abadi wants to talk. She said her and her husband. Mm -hmm. Hey, my name's Jimmy Abadi. Uh, I, you know, listen, I just want everybody to, to, to listen to one thing. I understand there's a handful of people that are going to stand up and do the right thing and be positive about this whole situation of Black Lives Matter. And that is totally understood. Uh, at the same time, we have to look at what has been happening with Black Lives Matters uh, protesting and the people that are involved with this, a lot of it has been negative. And, um, you know, that's our biggest concern that, it, that you're not gonna have just people from America come to this. And it does bring outsiders at all events to, to represent something that some people are positive and a lot of it's negative. And we, that's our fight. We don't think that it's safe in, in a residential uh, area um, at the same time, if you want to do this, you know, we can support it, but let's do it the right way. Do it down the harbor where it can be uh, monitored and everyone can see what's going on. And, you know, you're in a little area here. And when you guys said the community, um, I disagree. The community did not vote on this. This is a handful of people that want it. And I understand there are a handful of people that are going to do the right thing. Then there's another handful of people that are not gonna do the right thing. And that is our concern. Uh, it's been shown over and over again, the same thing that we mentioned before um, in a lot of these events where, where, where there's violence, uh, it stems from the Black Lives Matter. It doesn't mean that it, it's a handful of people that are gonna do the wrong thing. You're, you're creating something that you really can't control. And that is our biggest concern. Um, what it stands for, I'm not 100% sure. I really am not because it's diversified as far as what's going on. There's violence behind it. And that's our biggest concern. So for me, that I grew up in the flats and I grew up uh, um, Afro-American, I'm, I'm, I've been here my whole life. We never had a problem. Um, it's not about that. It's about being secure and safe. And this matter, if you take a look at it, is not very secure and safe. And, um, you know, I, I mean, our, let's think about it. All our police are getting a raw deal because of a few bad police. And um, i rather really see the blue light as matter also, you know, get some respect. And so if we're going to do that, uh, I know Laura mentioned it, let's do it down the harbor because, you know, it's very important to recognize uh, everyone. And I just think it's not a safe uh, issue to be putting in a residential area. And I'm not sure that... Uh, it's something that we need to do right now. And that's just my feeling. Um, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at everything that's going on in the country and uh, Black Lives Matter, I understand so there's a lot of positive going on, but there's a lot of negative. So if you're really looking at both sides, we have a legit uh, reason to ask you to not put it down here in a residential area. And I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to listen to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bai. Who's the next one? Uh, Galaxy A20. Hello, person Galaxy? The name of the phone. Hello? Unmute your, sp your speaker, Galaxy A20. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, who is it? Hello, my name is Jared Winchester. I'm one of the people who came before you last month to propose the idea. 
how you doing, uh, Mayor and Board? How you doing? Um, I've been following this for the last 20 minutes, and uh, I think the community who is in opposition to this has the wrong idea. For 15 years, we ran a block party luau that benefited the kids in the neighborhood who were going to college and who were going to school. We did it with conjunction with the police department who used to help get backpacks. Two years ago, we did a shirt that said all lives matter, okay? So this is not something that we're trying to be divisive on. This was something that we'd be happy if everybody in the community came out and helped us paint. Now we're not organizing or fundraising for some multicultural organization or some, uh, you know, head 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 group. This is Marmaronic, Center Avenue, Madison Avenue, the Flats. It's the people who grew up here. That's why this block party was started. Okay, it was never meant to be divisive. We didn't ask for Marmaronic Avenue. We asked for the area that we hang in because we could not do a block party because of social distancing. We told the village that we would have less than 50 people. This was going to be an invite only. This was never going to be put out as some massive day of painting. This was none of that. Okay, for the last, since the last time we talked, I've seen internet posts from half the people who spoke tonight who live in the neighborhood who say they grew up with us. Okay, now, I'm not opposed to the people in Rhinec. If they want to put a Blue Lives Matter sign up on their street and they support it, I'll come and help paint it. They can come down and help paint mine. But this hysteria that they're talking about, first of all, there's no such thing as blue lives, okay? I'm a black man. I go to work. I take my clothes off. I get my street clothes. I'm a black man. If you're a cop, you get in your uniform. You come out of work. You're whoever you are, black, white, Hispanic. Chinese, a woman, whatever. This is serious. This is not a game here. But we're not asking anything but to can maintain a 15-year anniversary and to do something. And at this point in our society, this point, this moment, Black lives need to be known it matters. We are never, the movement never said not all lives matter or nobody else's lives matter. This was to say, hey, look, you know, we're at the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. Tonight, we're talking about breast cancer. We're not talking about throat cancer. That's the point. Nothing more. Tomorrow, we can talk about throat cancer, foot cancer, whatever you want. The point is, this moment is to say, hey, look, America, Black Lives Matter. That's it. We're not going to be organizing for anybody outside Mermanic, and we don't want nobody outside Mermanic to come. We love our police department, but what they need, we, we're, we're trying to say is that we want the world to know Black Lives Matter. And that's all I have to say. I just don't want this community to keep thinking this is divisive in any way. Mr. Abadi uh, um, uh, and anybody else, come on down. I'll give you a paintbrush. And then when you want to go up to Rhinec and paint that Blue Lives Matter, I'll be there with you with my paintbrush. But this is not what this is about. And we know each other. We know Thank each you, other. Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Right? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Person who hasn't spoken. Damon Ravanelli. Romanelli, unmute your mic. Damon, you have to unmute your mic. Damon Romanelli, please unmute your mic. Maybe accidentally put his hand up. In your bottom left hand of the screen, there's an icon that you can click on to unmute your mic. Okay, Hello. You're on. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, well, first of all, in response to that last gentleman just spoke, that just spoke, there's nothing more divisive in this country right now than the Black Lives Matter movement. And like Jimmy Abadi said, there's two sides to that movement. There's what it really should be about and what it's really taken, what, uh, it's really taken on. Second of all, I also live in the flats. We don't, I don't call it Washingtonville. I'm a lifetime Americanic resident. And... It seems to me that every time there's something going on, they want to put it where we live. Every parade is staged down here. Every carnival is staged down here. The, the, the food bank was staged down here all summer. We're a, a, a 
three one-way streets that are backed up. There's times I can't even get in my driveway. So that's one issue. And like the, the rest of the talk caller said, there's so many more important issues that haven't been addressed that have been taken forever to be spoken about, yet this thing gets right on the, it's getting ready to get voted on within weeks. Again, Harbor Island, the center of Mamaroneck, is a great spot for any kind of mural to be painted on the ground. And also the center of the village, if you really want everyone to see it, that would be the place to go. Center in Madison is a small little section, people coming down the road from either way, it's gonna be nothing but problems. And if the last caller doesn't believe that people are gonna come there to see it from out of town, he's very ignorant on that. Also, there's the other communities, why is none of these things ever proposed to be done down there? Orienta, Shore Acres, Greenhaven, all these communities, it's always down in, in, in our area. Again, it's, we are a bunch of tight one-way streets and crowded areas. Nobody, again, is more diverse than our community. I have white neighbors, black neighbors, Jewish neighbors, Catholic neighbors, Spanish, Latin. We're all together. We don't need to be told Black Lives Matters. There's some places around here that maybe people need to be reminded when they come home for their million dollars. Maybe a mural on those streets would make more sense. Because we live amongst each other. We all try to get along. We all do get along. So, and it shouldn't be part of this block party either. It should be a separate thing. So I'm just saying, I don't think this mural should be painted at all. And if it is painted somewhere, it should be in a different area where the center of the, of the town or again, the Harbor, they moved the food bank from here. Finally, they should be doing other things in other areas of the community, maybe Columbus park. Or again, there's giant parking lots in the harbor. So that's all I have to say. And thank you for your time. And one way, one more thing I do have to say. I requested American flags being put on the, the streetlights in Mamaroneck um, years ago. And I was told that there's no money for it. Now, all of a sudden, we're finding money for this thing. On Memorial Day last year, there were only two American flags flying in the 220 businesses from 95 to the Harbor Island. One was my building and one was Molly Spillane's. So if that got pushed aside because of monetary reasons, there's a lot of other things more important than this Black Lives mural. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've heard from everybody. Uh, members of the board? I'd like, to, I'd like to know your mind. I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, to me, Black Lives Matter, the the way this started, and, and I, I realize there is some controversy about the, the movement or the Marxism behind it, but to me, Black Lives Matter is the civil rights movement of our time. Um, I think the residents who want to paint these words on a street in lieu of a block party that they can't have because of the pandemic, when I heard this idea, I thought, this, this is fabulous. I mean, I... My heart went out to them. I, I think it's um, a positive thing. It, it actually kind of breaks my heart to hear it become controversial um, in the village of Mamaroneck. I have no objection to it being moved if that's a, a better, if there's a better place for it. If, if the residents of Washingtonville don't think it belongs there, but it be belongs in a more neutral place or a more prominent place, I'm all for it. But, but I think it's, um, I think it can be a positive thing for the community. I really do. I don't think it necessarily brings violence. I, I, I just don't think that, maybe I'm naive, but I don't think that's what Mamaroneck is all about. I think this is a, um, an important civil rights statement. Um, so I, I support what they're trying to do. Any other board members? Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm kind of with Kelly. I, I do think that the Black Lives Matter movement is something that I, as a white person, can't really personally understand. I've had a pretty easy life, and I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not able to walk in other people's shoes as much as I might want to. And, um, but I also respect the fact that people are, are concerned that it will bring more traffic and more activity to their neighborhood. So I'm wondering if it's something that we could do in Harbor Island Park, if we could do it in a place that would would be um, a place that more people could see it, 
Um, I do think if we're going to paint a mural on a street, it's probably, it cannot be a permanent mural because at some point it's simply going to wear and tear. It's just a, like a, a conservation effort, but maybe that's something we can do um, as a community for the community. Trustee Natchez. I'm a very big civil rights person. When this was proposed, it was proposed as a mural and we don't have, this is not a mural at the moment. This is a statement which puts it in, from my vantage point, a little different category. I think Len's comment of uh, temporary paint to, for whatever is done, if anything is done, you know, is, is a, uh, is a uh, substantive comment. Uh, and thank you, Glenn, for that. Um, uh, it was the, the concept, as I understand it, was for a block party for people to be able to do something collectively together. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with the actual words uh, because they can easily be misinterpreted. I, you know, when the concept of a mural was created, I thought that that was a good thing to be done. Victor, you want to say Yeah, sure. I, I perfectly understand this. This is, this is well, well intended. And the, I think the key for the board here is, is can we guarantee the safety and can we guarantee then that, well, I mean, we cannot deny that, that it, 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 is, it is political. So once we, we go this way, then <clears throat> we will have to uh, accept uh, other proposals along the same line. So whatever we require from, from, from the, the group that's trying to do this, and I do have some questions about, about specifics. I think we do need to hear about specifics. We, we have to we would have to be prepared to to require or or at least to have even handed even handed approach uh, i do know th this is this is a turning point i do in in in, in the way we all uh, have to embrace um, i think the future of 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 social the social compact of of what we're going to do in, in these lives and how we're going to manage uh, the difficulties, the education, everything is really turning and the social piece of it is gonna be a big one. And, and so I, I agree that is, is, is an important moment where people want to express themselves. But the, the Board of Trustees has to be very careful into, into what, we, what we allow. Once, once something is painted in the street, then, then it is something we are allowing, right? And we can't just deny it. We just we just can't deny, it. and and then the the problem here is that it, it goes beyond a mural to to be to be to be that to 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 be to be that uh, statement or or it, 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 the problem is it 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 very different for us to guarantee that is the message and not and not the movement or other context. How can we guarantee that if we if we can guarantee that I I'm 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 more I'm for I'm for so it, it sound, it, I don't want it to sound that, 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 I, that, I'm, that, I'm, that I'm against it. What I, what I can't reconcile is how to do it properly. Uh, that's what I think need, needs, needs to be the focus of, of the board. The board should not kind of say yes or no, because once we embrace, we know we have to, to, to allow other things and it would have to be, it would have to be, um, um, you know, I, I mean, um, we, we, we've, First, have to focus on 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 that this doesn't derail that there's safety there, and uh, I I think at this point we don't have the elements uh, that would that would guarantee that, and 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 I'm not just making this up because we have to make an approval right, and the approval is in two ways. One is 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 the block party, the gathering, which I believe that's actually approved by the by the manager, not us, and they have to go through what the code is. And if they comply with what the code is, they have the block party. The, 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 what we are authorizing is, is the uh, using of property and, and the statement, as, I, as, as has been discussed, 
one thing was the uh, mural or some expression, but here the expression is it. It's in it's in the backup of the of the of the of the um, <coughs> meeting. It's it's the painting of of the words of the words in 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 big in, in big. So so it is is this that the the expression itself is 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 is, is that message. So that how how that's going to last. Um, how that's going to be put together. I think it, what, they have, what we have in front of us doesn't explain anything. It just says uh, the first word is there's going to be an end, an end of summer party will be held in Washingtonville neighborhood on September 26th on Madison. That doesn't kind of reconcile with what I heard today. The second whereas is that the vendor organizers have, or, have requested permission to paint. That is, yes, that is what, what, what we have in front of us now, but there's nothing, there's nothing else. Um, there's no, there's no um, way for us really with what we have now guarantee that, that this, this will not get uh, out of hand or, or um, become, become something that it's, it's permanent or it can, it can be perceived um, or even, even become, you know, it, 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 it will be out of control. I, I think if the board finds a way of making sure that the event happens in an organized way where it can, the expression of the, of the area can be done, although it's still controversial, uh, that, 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 that would make a difference. It is not, it is not, it is not in front of us. So, so I, I do have issues with, with where we are. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm glad the neighborhood came out and voiced their concerns. And I understand them, <clears throat> but I don't particularly hold the same views. Uh, I grew up not in Washingtonville, but I grew up on the west side of Manhattan in a very, very diverse but in some ways segregated community. Uh, we live together apart. And I think that that is in a lot of ways, the history of race in America. We live together apart. Uh, I think the words black lives matter, those three words really have meaning. I, I think they're important words and they're not saying that white lives don't matter. They're not saying that Hispanic lives don't matter. They're not saying that Asian lives don't matter. They're saying, and, what I, and, and I, I'd be willing to be corrected by folks who have these feelings, but what I believe they're saying is that for 400 years, all lives had not mattered. And we have been trying to tell you that. We have been begging you to listen to that. And we had a young man a few years ago who knelt during the national anthem and he became a pariah. And they, everybody said, well, that's not the way you protest. And then people started protesting. And everybody said, well, that's not the way you protest. So what is it? You know, during the civil rights movement in the 60s, there was also, you know, uh, negative uh, connotations and, and, and uh, you know, while there was peaceful civil rights movement, there were also riots and wants and there were riots in other communities. Uh, I think the, the, the violence that has happened recently has been blown out of proportion. I think if you look at the violence that happened uh, during the civil rights movement, it, it isn't near comparable. Uh, I think that we can protect our community. I think that this is important. I, I think that we're at a point, you know, I'm gonna be 60 years old and I feel like we've had the same conversation about race since I was a little boy. And I frankly want to move past that. I want to move past that. Well, if, if you know, because what happens is, and, and we demonize people, you know, we, 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 we allow others to, to tell us that that person once what you have, and you know, if, if you give him that, then it, it, it lessens you, and it's just nonsense. It's like, I'm only able to reach my full potential as a 60-year-old white guy where everybody else is able to reach their full potential. 
And that to me, that to me is the meaning of all men being created equal. And it's just not me. It, it, everybody has to be equal to me and I have to be equal to everybody else. And we have a large community that has been saying for generation after generation after generation that that is not happening for us. And we didn't listen. And we don't listen. And you know they're trying to say it peacefully. And, and they're trying to say it emphatically. And we don't listen. And then when people get angry, we wonder why. And, and, and this has nothing to do with political persuasion. I know plenty of white liberals who, who think that you know they uh, that, that they are they are you know above everybody else on this issue, and when you dig down, they're not. It's the same nonsense when you dig down. Yeah, you know, it, it's just I don't want my kids, I don't want my grandkids to be having the same damn argument sixty years from now. So you know, I, I'm I'm supportive of the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm supportive of equal rights for everybody in this country. And, I, and I'm, I'm gonna acknowledge that it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. You know, I remember like in the 60s when, you know, some good laws were passed and things changed. And then in the 70s, it's like, we kind of said as a country, all right, we're done. I don't wanna talk about that anymore. We did that, it's over. And I recognize it because that's my family dynamic too. You know, we, we wanna deny everything bad that happened. But what happens is it just comes out some other way. And what really bugs me is that in some parts of this country and in, in, in some uh, situations, you've seen, you know, Nazis marching. You've seen people marching with Confederate flags, all done to, to rile up and to incite and to, to, to unleash that hate. And that scares me. That scares me a lot more than somebody saying, please pay attention to me because my life matters. So I understand the concerns of the community, I really do. And, and, and you know, but I, I hope that we try and see what we have in common, especially those, you know, who, who live close together. Because, you know, what, what I did get out of growing up where I grew up was there really wasn't a hell of a lot of difference between myself and the other kids. And I think a lot of people have this experience. I found that out through sports when we all started actually playing together. And uh, you know, if, if you look at a lot of people you know, in, in this country uh, who have been on the, the leading edge of that, it's because they have experienced that a lot of times through sports. Uh, you know, it, I, I didn't come up with this. Folks in the community came to us with this. Uh, it seems reasonable to me where that is located is a traditional African-American street. Uh, as uh, Ms. Dickerson pointed out, the uh, Black Elks Club was always there. And, and do you wonder why was there a Black Elks Club? Let that sink in for a minute. There was a Black Elks Club. Because they couldn't go to the regular Elks Club. It's just to, to say that the, the vestiges of this and the permeations of this are gone and, and we're all good is just to put your head in the sand. And I don't know what the board is going to do, but you know, I, I think that we as a community have a responsibility to say what we stand for. And we do not have to entertain everything that comes along just because we do this. As, that is not the case. And you know, we know that, but does anybody want to make a motion to advance this? I'll bring a motion to advance this. I, I do. Th I do think there um, there could be an ongoing conversation of whether we should do this in Harbor Island or somewhere else. I understand they have something. You know, it's it's the twenty sixth. It's coming. Um, okay, I'll second the motion. I'd like to move to amend the motion. Well, I assume, I assume, Kelly, you're you're moving the motion that was in the packet. Yeah, it, I am. It's already been made and seconded. 
and I'm moving to amend it. With what amendment? Okay, and the uh, now therefore be resolved uh, after the word to paint, add a mural without words and strike Black Lives Matter, and at the end without uh, with temporary paint. So you don't want the words Black Lives Matter? Take out the words Black Lives Matter in a mural without words and after Grand Street with temporary paint. Does anybody second Dan's amendment? I have a comment on that, a discussion on that, uh, which, is, which is this. Um, give, me, give me one second here. Um, let me share this this is this is what is proposed so can uh dan's uh, amendment will change what what the uh, community uh, uh, organizers are, are asking for so right. uh, then I, I i think it it um you know it's it's um uh, we'll have to be accepted we have to be clear either we allow this uh, proposal, uh, either we impose conditions to this proposal, um, and maybe uh, that's 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 uh, that's a workable solution. Otherwise, the amendment. Uh, I mean, I, I can't understand it. Then that's why I raise it because this is this is really what's in front of us. So my question stands: Is there a second to Dan's amendment? I think Victor was trying to clarify what Dan's amendment was before he considered seconding it. Well, he said he didn't understand it, and I and it, it's taking Black Lives Matter out. And the, the the problem I have with with both resolutions is that there are no conditions. Actually, uh, Dan Dan that the second piece of Dan is 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 I think well intended, which is which is to have this. Uh, I, I think it's allowing the expression of the community in, in a peaceful manner, uh, something that is temporary that doesn't become uh, kind of an icon or something that could be could be divisive. Because we, you know, it's, it's very hard once 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 uh, you know once it starts. Maybe it, it'll be it'll be a, it could be just a great event, but we 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 can't we can't control that. Uh, you know, we we. Uh, um, so, so that that the, the piece that it's it's kind of more te temporal. I think that piece of of of, of Dan of Dan is 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 well is well intended. The first motion is just open ended. It, it doesn't it doesn't have 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 any clarity, and and I don't think it, it it's, um, it's 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 solving. So we're not we're not there yet. It could be. Uh, I don't know what other thing the the. Um, okay. Can be changed, or the organizers could propose, but I, I, I just think we need, we would need to constructively work on something. Uh, but the yes or no is, is not gonna it's not gonna be. The motion and the amendment. I don't hear a second to the amendment. So, Orgy, vote the motion. Kropel. Definitely. Trustees Winstrup. Yes. Trustee Natchez? No. Trustee Lucas? Um, I would really, I, I, I think that it's, it, that the motion as proposed was to end it. I think that, um, I don't think we can ask people to change the content of what they want to do for a mural because it's an, it's an artistic or an emotional or um, a personal expression. Um, but I think um, that we have to have this is going to be the first of many requests. We need to have some sort of a policy about how we handle requests like this. And I think that all of these kinds of things need to be temporary because they will just end up wearing off slowly and not looking okay. So I, I, I'm not opposed to the entire idea, but as, the, as it's described now, I think, I mean, I think we need to go back to the drawing board. So described now, I would say no, but I think we should keep working on it. Victor? Along the same lines, I, I vote no for this resolution. Mayor Murphy? I vote yes. Okay, so it fails three to two. Okay. Hey, Tom? Yes, ma'am. Tom, I, I'd like to um, 
bring the motion as amended to include temporary paint and to be done um, at Harbor Island. Well, you know what? L let's l let's talk to the, the sponsors of the. Okay. About that. Can, you, we, can I say something? We have a meeting next Monday. We have an extra meeting next Monday, which is before the event. And I know it's hard to organize an event, but we have an extra meeting next Monday because we're, we're reviewing the comp plan. And, you know, I keep thinking about, like, I, I don't know, I'm in the Rhinex School District, and we have a, there's a rock there. And, you know, every month the kids get to paint it with a different reason. And sometimes it's mad, and sometimes it's it's a flag, um, and sometimes it's about, see, it's not usually anything political, but it's always something topical. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, the Panthers, because it's a school logo. But, you know, I think that this is, um, <laughs> something that the entire village could get behind and I think we need to find a way to do it. And I'd also say it's not that this isn't our idea. This came from a, a community group um, and that it's not really a block party. I think I, I mean I think there's going to be a group of people painting. I don't think it's going to be a block party and in New York State we're allowed to have gatherings of 50 people. You know we're allowed to do that. So we can't say no to a gathering of 50 people. So I'm this, I would second guess. It's in okay. lieu of a block. All right, Let's, we have a lot on the agenda. Thank you all. Thank you for the audience members uh, for your participation. It was, you know, if nothing else, it was, it was a discussion that needed to be had. I, I, don't, I, think I, 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 I don't think no, it's over. I don't think it's over. It's not over. And, it's and over, but it, it's the beginning of, it's the beginning of continuing discussions. Yes. And I do appreciate the number of people who showed up, gave up their time tonight to be heard. I really it's always do. Good. Even always good. I disagree, but I appreciate hearing you. Yep. All righty. Where the heck was I? Uh, item 3A, resolution scheduling public hearing of PLL H 2020, amending chapters 342 and 348, uh, Ray, fee to be charged in lieu of dedicated parkland. Uh, we've been through this a couple of times. This is just scheduling the public hearing. Uh, we have a form now that uh, is acceptable. And what in some and substance, if this law gets passed at the public hearing will do, it will uh, allow folks who are building buildings that are all affordable, meaning that every dwelling is an affordable dwelling under the law. Uh, we, to, in some degree, waive the recreation fee to try and give that kind of development a hand when people are doing all affordable. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments? I, I have one question. Uh, did, did we need to circulate this to ZBA and Planning Board because it's a zoning change? I mean, we did it. In, we did it initially. Do we need to circulate this revised draft of it before we schedule? Sure. Is that a requirement? You don't usually recirculate before you schedule. You usually circulate after schedule with enough time to circulate. Now. Yeah, that's what that's what our new policy we adopted. Okay. We circulate now. Right after we. But are we, we, but are we leaving we enough schedule. time for that? Sure. Wait, we just we we schedule it into a time in the future. This isn't like it has to be done right now. We're not voting to limit the public hearing. We're voting to schedule a public hearing. Yeah, to start it. Just, I think yeah, the point is that I know, I, right, but I'm <laughs> saying we're voting to start it in four, but basically four weeks, right? Four weeks. Yeah. Does that resolution. give enough time to get the comments back? The yeah. draft resolution says October 13th. You can do it at a subsequent meeting if you want. You want to? You want to do it at the end of October? Just to be sure. I just don't want to have to, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to delay it and I don't want to have to reschedule it. So let's do it at the end of October. Because we know the second weeks. meeting. I'm sorry? The second meeting. That means that the 27th? No. No. Um, Is that because of the, right, because, because of the holiday, okay. I think. 26. Isn't it the 26th? 26. 26, okay. All right, the 13th is after the holiday, right? Yeah. Okay, October 26th. Okay, with that, I'm uh, so, so scheduling this for October 26th. 
the resolution the just be, has to be amended to say that it'll be circulated to the zoning board and planning. No, it doesn't have to be amended to say that. We do that as a policy. We, no, we include it. If you see the next, uh, in, in, the, in the subsequent law, we, we always spell it out. Just just see, for okay. example, the next law we're doing it. So you just include and, the, and, the, and the, just use the same text. Okay. The proposed Using local law is referred to the Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals for, an, for advisory opinions in accordance with 342.96 and 342.97, respectively. Okay. We'll stop. As, as amended, as Victor just read, and the date of October 26th, I'll make a motion to schedule a public hearing on this law for October 26th. Second. Augustino. Trustee Winter. Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafur? Yes. Mayor Murphy? I, I thank the board for the hard work. This, this went through many changes and I think it's going to be good for the community. And I thank you all for supporting it. And I vote yes. Colleagues, at this point, I have to bail out as I, as I announced. Uh, good night. Hi, Victor. Bye-bye. So, Bye-bye. Good night, Victor. All right. Item 4 H. Resolution authorizing to exec execute an amended license agreement uh, with CWAMP Mamaric LLC. Uh, uh, whereas the village of Mamaric previously entered into a license agreement dated December 27th, 2019, with CWAMP LLC. This is the old AMP site uh, where CVS and a new supermarket are. That provides CWAMP with a revocable license to occupy and use a portion of the village right of way at the end of Leicester Avenue. And whereas CWAP has requested to place two bollards on the west side of Leicester Avenue in order to protect the transformer, which they don't own, and in order to memorialize granting CWAMP's request, an amendment to the current license agreement is required. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Board of Trustees authorizes the village manager to execute on behalf of the village. The attached license agreement, amendment agreement between CWAMC and AMP, and resolve that the village manager is authorized to undertake such administrative acts such as necessary to effectuate the terms of the amendment agreement. Uh, Mr. Attorney, could you explain this? Uh, yes, Mayor. As as part of its site plan approval, Bricksmore. <coughs> um, was required to ask the village board to um, for a license over a certain piece of village property um, that would allow access from the end of Leicester Avenue to its property. Uh, several years ago, the village granted, the board of trustees granted that license. Um, since that time, there were some, some additional developments there where there were a uh, there was a ramp put in uh, for handicapped access, a, a, a railing along with it, some landscaping, and uh, what's happened now is there are two things that happened. There was a sewer line that uh, uh, I'm sorry, a storm sewer that Bricksmore agreed could tie into its storm sewer system, a village storm sewer on Leicester Leicester Avenue that uh, Bricksmore agreed could tie into its storm sewer system. And then this amendment deals with uh, two bollards that they want to place in order to protect a, a transformer that was there. And this amended license agreement would give them uh, authority to do that. There are two versions of the agreement uh, in your packet. One was the version I had originally prepared, I believe in July that you discussed at your last meeting. The other version has some changes that were discussed at the last meeting. So um, I, when someone makes a motion, if there's a motion, I think I caution you just to be clear which um, version of the agreement you are moving. So I'd like to make a motion. Uh, well, can I? Door is talking. I didn't have this in my packet, so I'm looking at. 
the, what I think is the newer version, which does say that there is an ADA compliant railing. I, I'm not clear as to what the difference between the red and the yellow is. So if you look at my memo, uh, the, my memo of September 10th attaches three things. The first is the prior memo that I sent you on July 7th. Uh -huh. which is accompanied by a version of the license agreement. That's the first version. The second document is a, the revised version of the license agreement. And that shows all of the changes to the existing agreement in red and highlights the changes from the July 7th version in yellow. Okay, thank you, okay. Okay. Thank you, okay. Anybody questions or concerns? No. Do no. want to make a motion? I, the second version with the highlights in yellow includes additional suggestions that I have suggested. Am I correct, Bob? It, uh, it includes the at matters you discussed, the board discussed at its last meeting, it does not include the matters in the email that you sent me subsequent to that meeting. Okay, I will make a, I will make a motion to approve uh, the amended resolution highlighting the yellow that uh, the village met, the village attorney has just talked about. I want a second. A second. Augustino. Trustees Wishup? Yes. Trustee Natchez? No. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you all. Uh, resolution scheduling public hearing on PLLE amending chapter 240 uh, and 342 where required setbacks from water bodies. <coughs> this is uh, the now infamous uh, 50 foot setback requirement. Uh, this law will be heard if it's passed tonight on October 13th, but I think we should also Give that to the 26 too. Does that sound good to everybody? Yes. Yeah, because I don't want to. I don't want to hurry them. And you know, two weeks is not going to hurt any landowner, but it, it, it will help our boards. Okay. This this we we passed a PLLC last year, and in PLLC uh, there was a prohibition on any uh, building within a 50 foot setback of a water body and uh, that was not allowed to be altered by the planning board or zoning board the way we wrote it and that is not I think what we intended uh, so this law will give if passed uh, the uh, zoning board the opportunity uh, to var give variances uh, uh, 50 feet from a water body in some and substance that's what we have and this is amended to have a public hearing on October 26th. Do have a motion? So moved. Second. But is, there's, a, there's a hand up. Uh, could you grab Glenn? I think that was up from before. Glenn, are you up for this item? Yes. I so, just wanted to mention uh, number one, Let's face it, this was put on, uh, this was amendment was added at the last minute and was very poorly thought out. Uh, when you amend it, to go what some of the complaints in the village are, you have to start to think about not just what's good for Orienta, Sound Shore, Shore Acres, you have to start to think what is good 
for the Washingtonville area. You have to allow the people of Washingtonville to be able to build, to add to, to make their house, houses and properties accommodating to them and their families. Because if you got a house that's a million and a half uh, dollar house down in Orienta and you can't do anything with that house, you could always move to someplace else in the village. If you can't do anything with your house in the Washingtonville area, in order to accommodate your family, basically you are removing people from the village. You're gonna become a village of nothing but millionaires. That's where you're gonna lose total diversification. So as you come up with how you're gonna amend this law, please understand that everybody in this village yet is a millionaire you still have a working, small working class section of town and their house is most of what they have in equity. And you have to start to work to allow people to make their houses usable for their families to stay here in the village of Mamerna. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, If, okay, I need a motion. Well, we have a motion in a second. Wait, don't we have a motion? Yeah, but first and a second, we need a roll call. Call roll. Trustee Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? <clears throat> yes, and I just want to say to, to, to respond to, to Glenn's comments is that this actually allows people to be able to build in places they can't technically, especially if they're doing something that improves both their property and the flooding. So this is really meant to be a safety valve so people can develop their properties in the floodplain. It's, it, it's, it's supposed to help them, not hinder them. Thank Thanks. you. Yes. Cool. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, uh, I just want to say, you know, we enable the webinar and the chat for people who are participating. I don't really care what you write and say about me, but when you write about other participants and people in the community, you got to get cut off. This is not a, a venue to vent your spleen. Thank you. Okay. The uh, next item, resolution scheduling public hearing proposed local law A of 2020. Uh, proposed local law amending chapter 260 of the code of the village of Mermanic regarding the allowance of dogs in parks. Uh, and I believe this just is about Harbor Island Park, am I correct? Yes, just Harbor Island. Okay. And this is scheduled for September 29th. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? Uh, we received some comments today, but I think that, or maybe yesterday, but they, you know, they, I think that they should be part of the public hearing process. Yes, without a doubt. Yes, thanks. But I think we need to make sure we include them because I, I think it's hard, you know, this is going to be our first big public hearing on Zoom. So I think we want to make sure that people who've written in comments get them made, even if they don't get onto the Zoom. Uh, thank you. Does anybody have a... Does anybody have a... I want to make a motion. I move to hope to push this forward and adopt and hold the public hearing on September 29th. Um, I'll second that with thanks to the rec committee. I know they did a lot of work on this. A lot of work. And so did the attorneys. Yeah. The group effort. Yep. Roll call. Yes, Augie, call the roll. Trustee Westrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Ooh. 
item 4E. Uh, this is to appointments to the ad hoc ethics code review committee. Uh, we, we are starting a committee to look at our ethics law to see what can be changed, what can be improved. Uh, this this uh, appoints Jocelyn Donut, Ellen Hauptman, John Hofsetter, uh, Dan Carlson, Brian Carr, and Michael Kopey. Somebody have any questions or concerns? No, I, 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 just that they have had some questions, which Kelly and I are going to try and answer. We can't really answer as a body. So Kelly and I have been, or, and I think we're going to try and do it this week. It's been a little crazy, but I think we need to pick a date or we can have a work session with them that's mutually convenient to <laughs> all of these people. I know another another meeting, but I think maybe a kickoff meeting a would help. Regular meeting. Just, hmm? Let them come to a regular work session. Yeah, or a regular meeting maybe. Because yeah. our work sessions get clogged up. Maybe maybe at a regular meeting, that might be a better, a better hour for some of them. But anyway, I just want to just say that Kelly and I have not forgotten and we are compiling materials and trying to answer the questions that were asked. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know we got some great volunteers, so thanks to everyone who stepped yes. up. It'll be a good committee. Anybody want to make that motion? I will. So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees Winship. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. And next and time. We, oh, can I, we had also discussed appointing the chair. Oh, yes. I, I make a motion uh, that Mr. Dan Carson be appointed chair of this committee. I second that motion and hope he agrees. Yeah, it's, it's already done. He can't disagree. <laughs> uh, Orgy, please call the roll. Trustees Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Hey, Murphy? Aye. <sighs> okay. Resolution authorizing budget transfers and year-end transfers of funds for Village of Marinic fiscal year. Uh, Jerry, you want to talk about this? These are just year-end things, uh, Mayor, that have to be resolved um, regarding um, our fiscal year 19-2020. Um, so they're just some transfers of some items, um, police retirement, employee retirement, which are... Um, um, they were a little bit over what we expected, so we would be moving thirty thousand one seventy from the accounts on the left side to the accounts on the right side. Okay. Uh, anybody have questions or concerns? No. We have a hand up. Lynn. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Yep. Yes. Um, this all has it. I was going to ask this under order of the bills. We have um, some legal bills that were both for last year and this year, and we have a lot of um, people uh, either canceling parking permits or uh, like the uh, kayak uh, summer camp and such was canceled. If that money was collected last year, does that have to be reconciled with last year's budget? Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any comments? Have a motion. So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees, Winship? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Okay, this is the next is uh, authorizing legal uh, contract between ourselves and Mr. Spolzino's firm until uh, the organizational meeting on December 7th of this year. Any questions or concerns? Okay, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Thank you, Bob and Christy, for your work. Augustino. 
Trustees Winship? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, uh, yeah, I just want to thank Bob and Christy. They've, they've, they've done a great job this year under difficult circumstances. Thank you both very much. Item 4H, resolution establishing an ad hoc committee for year-round recreation study. Uh, Kelly, you want to talk about this? Um, we never got to it in the work session, so, um, but this is, we, you know, this was to continue the work of the tennis committee, um, their recommendations in January. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. Um, I modified the resolution based on what we discussed, having, you know, at most three members from the tennis committee, at most three members from the recreation committee and um, three members from the public, not otherwise members of either committee to get some diversification and move forward because the, we need to, do some studies and make some plans. I think we should suspend the rules and take this because I it's just we need to advertise it. So I think we should yeah. suspend the rules yeah. and we didn't we had such a long work session. Yeah, exactly. I I think that. We had talked about this at one point, hadn't we? We talked we talked about it, but then we changed the resolution and we didn't have the right resolution. But I, I just yeah. think this is I made, this I made is, a motion to suspend the rules to allow this to be heard tonight. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Kelly, you want to make the motion? I will move that we adopt this. Thank you. Second. Augustino? Trustees Winship? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you. Uh, communication to the board round two. Mr. Mayor, uh, we have the item that we discussed with the police chief in. Oh, thank you. Thank right, you. Right, right, right. Very much. Thank you. Uh, Augie didn't remind me. <laughs> I no, actually, in Augie's defense, he gave me a note. <laughs> he gave me a note, and uh, I flubbed it. Good move, Dan. Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah. Uh, tonight, we heard from our police chief, and uh, they need a new communication desk. Uh, this has been. Uh, included in the budget. Uh, apparently they rent this sort of equipment. Uh, the equipment they have there now is 13 years old and it has uh, used up its useful life. And uh, this equipment will enable them to uh, continue serving the community in the 21st century. Uh, it is uh, a piece of equipment that uh, handles 911 calls and, and all kinds of various police functions. So it's a very vital, vital a uh, piece of equipment that our police department uses to keep us all safe. So I would like a motion to add this communication desk to our agenda tonight. We suspended the rules. So yeah, motion to suspend the rules. First, motion right? to suspend the rules. No, I got to add it to the agenda. It's because it wasn't on, this was on the agenda. I got this one. Okay, I don't sorry. Need to suspend the rules. Sorry. I need you're a right, motion right. to add this to the agenda. So moved. I'll second. second. All in favor of adding it to the agenda? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yep. Now, this will be item <clears throat> A. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Which is I. I suspend the rules. Okay, I suspend the, the rules. There. All right. I was testing you. Motion to add. Actually, H I. What comes after I? J. 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 Wouldn't this be J? A is, J is the add item to agenda. Oh, okay. So this is K? K. Okay. Police communication desk. All right. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion to approve this? Well, should we explain it first? Just people that I didn't know the work. I thought I just did. <laughs> Maybe. Sorry. You <laughs> I just get it late. I know. It's been a long night. Okay. Uh, the explanation <laughs> that I just used. <laughs> Ditto. Yeah. Does anybody want to make a, I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Augustino, please call a roll. Trustees Winship? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. 
I, I, yes, and I just say that Tom's explanation wasn't quite as good as the Chief's. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Murphy? Uh, well, it's not what I do for a living. It's in my defense. Okay. All right, now I see a hand up, Len. Tom. Hey, Len, what? Is this communication too? Yeah, you, you snuck in. Okay. Um, let's a uh, couple of points. Uh, just to show progress, Elks Lodge in Mamarnik has actually had black exalted rulers over the last couple of years. Um, the new Elks is not the old Elks. Uh, Nourishell Elks, which I was a member of, has had probably more female exalted rulers in the last uh, 20 years than males. So you do have progress on uh, that front. Uh, talking about the Washingtonville area, uh, one of the reasons they're defensive is they have asked for things in the past and just haven't been done. Drawing the lines to mark the parking space in Washingtonville, they've been asking for this for 20 years. There's no reason why it can't be done. And that also goes from Amarnik Avenue over on that section of town. I proposed that you allowed parking on Mamarnik Avenue where the uh, auto school is, where Fava's um, insurance is, that whole block from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. allow overnight parking there. You could open up another 20 spots. Now instead of 147 spots for the neighborhood, you got 167 spots for the neighborhood. Uh, redoing the curbs, you know, you, 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 they, they just feel neglected. They've felt neglected for years and years. And again, when adopting the different laws and Nora, I realize that you're, you know, what you're doing with this law is you're going to make it better for the homeowners, but overall, you know, you know the uh, the accessory use apartments, things like that. Mamarnik is different, diverse areas, and the one law fits all is not working, and something has to be worked out for the residents of Washingtonville. If you are looking to keep a diverse community, whether it's racial or it's economic, because you're going to just wind up with a bunch of millionaires if you don't allow people to start to be able to use and grow their properties. Uh, I'd like uh, somebody to speak on uh, U.S. Open. I know it's going to be this week. Uh, is there any problem at the harbor? You know, uh, just uh, give a quick, you know, idea of, you know, any restrictions that are going on at Harbor Island to deal with the parking, where they're meeting to avoid. And uh, lastly, uh, you can disagree with people. I'm tired of having people being attacked, whether it's Mayor Murphy or it's the president. You know, everybody, let's take a step back from the red brick. No politician in this country is Hitler. It's an insult to those who fought in World War II. I had a caddy master, and one day the kids were running around as, oh, you're like Hitler, and he stopped everybody in their tracks. And he brought us all over, he rolled up his arm, he showed us the number on the arm, and say, never, never compared to something, because it's an insult to every single person who is in Auschwitz. We have to start to pull back on both sides Everybody's got to stop pulling back the reverence, the, 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 all, all this. The last mayor, people would say the worst things in the world about him. I stand up for Norm and I stand up for Tom. If you don't like the policy, argue the policy. If you think you want to get a change, vote him out of office. But let's stop with the personal attacks on everybody and just take a step back and be a little bit more civil. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Okay. All right, nobody's hand is up. Uh, next item is the update 
from our village manager, Mr. Barbaria. Mayor, um, there's no problem with the parking in Harbor Island Park. Today was our first day. Um, we are um, very happy that the USGA has brought in a very professional company to be able to manage uh, the parking uh, for the employees and the um, volunteers for the US Open. Everyone's very excited about the US Open. I'm very excited because um, I hope to see some of the players in our downtown area. Um, but uh, things are going well, much to the credit of the individuals who work at the Harbor Master Office, at the Recreation Building, and at the Parks Department. Uh, they really put um, a lot of effort into trying to make sure that the people who still have um, a desire to get on their boat um, that are um, provided um, the opportunity to be able to get into the harbor without much trouble. Um, in addition to that, I have two items that we need to file for the record. One of them is the agreement with Sustainable Westchester, and the other is an agreement with Seagrave Fire Apparatus for a new fire truck. That's it, Mayor. When will the fire truck be ready? Do we have any idea? It'll take about a year? It'll take about a year. I think nine months or so was the target. Thank you, Jerry. You don't want to rush those things. <laughs> uh -huh. I just, you can't buy one off the shelf. No, they don't. They don't. They don't have them on the shelf. Uh, Ogie, do you have a report from the treasurer? Yes, Mayor. Uh, renewal of Continental View parking stickers expire on August thirty first, twenty twenty. Uh, they can be purchased online at the Village of Merrick website. Um, second item, Mayor, is the Tree Committee resignation. Uh, resignation of Christine Sculpey. Thank you, Will. Uh, Mr. Village Attorney? Nothing from me, Mayor. Okie dokie. Uh, minutes, boards, commissions, committees, uh, minutes of the Board of Trustees, work sessions, a regular meeting of August 10th, special meeting of August 7th and August 17th, the work session, and AP minor items meeting. Of August 24th, 2020. Minutes of the Board of Ethics meetings on June 5th, June 19th, July 3rd, July 20th, July 30th, 2020. Have been busy. Minutes of the Flood Advisory Committee meeting of February 26th, 2020. Minutes of the Committee for the Environment meeting of February 25th, 2020. Minutes of the Board of Architecture Review of June 18th, July 16th, August 20th, 2020. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen. What, that concludes could, could can we add one little thing just about the, the tree committee resignation means we need a new person on tree, mm -hmm. but Kelly can attest that there's two people on traffic. Are you down one or two on traffic? I believe we're down two. Two on traffic and um, two on the arts council. So just, also, you know. We also need someone on flood. I think we had, didn't we have somebody waiting in the wings for the arts council? Well, there might be a couple of people that they're gonna call, but we just wanted to just, you know, make sure that we're gonna put all these out on the website soon and yeah. just take a look because we have Thank a few you. openings. Thank you. Our committees, people seem to leave. I don't think it's Kelly or me. Let's hope not. No. Okay. All right, I need a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Second. Okay, thank you all. Have a good evening. You too. All Bye. 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 Good Thank night. you all. Night. Night, night everyone. Night.